Shaman King 2 is basically a simpler version of a Castlevania game. You've got your standard attack and jump buttons, as well as the ability to summon spirits to help you out in tight spots. The game throws some combos and simpler skills like spin attacks and dodging your way as well, but the controls are pretty bare bones and easy to get to grips with. Of course, that's not all, as throughout the game you'll come across different equipment and spirits to utilize. The abilities can range from throwing paint on an opponent to increase stats like health, defense, or movement speed. These special abilities are all dependent on the amount of magic you possess, and along with each of the other stats will naturally increase in power and become easier to use the further you progress in the adventure. The game has plenty of enemies and bosses that will test your skills and reflexes. On the other hand, some of these challenges can be caused by a random enemy or obstacle, making the game more frustrating than challenging. But it manages to keep this to a minimum, throw in a game length, clocking in at around 40 hours, and you get a tough game minor annoyances and all. Now visually, it's actually really good for a Game Boy Advance game. The sprites are animated really well, and if you've seen the anime that the game is based on, the many different shamans will be instantly recognizable, with all of their special abilities in tow. The environments are incredibly detailed and diverse, as well as presenting a good degree of interaction for the player to indulge in. Overall, it still pales in comparison to other games in its genre, but it presents a solid story with some interesting gameplay elements that help it stand out. Game Boy Advance was home to a huge range of fighting games, including the likes of Tekken and Street Fighter, but as with most consoles, many games often get overlooked, and the perfect example is Dual Blades. As the name suggests, Dual Blades is a weapon-based fighter that allows you to control one of several characters, who each possess their own string of basic attacks and special moves. Naturally, it's a good idea to play through as all of them, in order to find one that suits your style of play best. Of course, it's not just simply about hammering away at your enemy to win though, as several mechanics mechanics manage to mix up the gameplay rather nicely and offer ways to come back with the likes of parries and guard attacks that can turn the tide of a battle in a flash, complementing your abilities and defensive options with the super attacks, which are beholden to a gauge that slowly grows with every hit you land or take. These serve as a surefire way to take out your opponent and when timed correctly with standard combos, they can deal devastating amounts of damage. Like most fighting games, there's an abundance of modes to get stuck into as well. The main attraction being the arcade mode, which allows you to unlock a few secret characters, as well as multiplayer and training, which are pretty self-explanatory. Littered throughout each arcade run, however, are a series of minigames that manage to break up the action. These range from dodging oncoming enemies to short test your might-inspired sequences that add a bit more variety to each playthrough. On the whole, it's by no means the best fighting game on the Game Boy Advance, but it offers up a respectable take on the genre that will likely please both old and new fans alike. Dokopan is an RPG that uses a rather interesting battling system which is derived from the classic rock paper scissors formula that many games use. When you first start a battle, you must choose between two cards that are hidden from you. One depicts a sword, while the other is a shield. If you choose the sword card, then you have the opportunity to strike first, while the shield will make you defend first. In both defending and attacking, you have four choices to make. Basic skill, rock skill, paper skill, or scissor skill. The trick in this game is to match your type of attack or defense with the opponent's selection. For example, if you choose to use a rock defense and your opponent has chosen a rock defense as well, your selections will cancel out. If you have chosen a rock defense against a paper attack, they will blow through your skill and deal out full damage. A system based around luck may have the potential to annoy a few players, but in my experience, it's easily the highlight of the game. However, the main draw alongside achieving a higher rank is to collect monsters in dungeons similar to Pokemon. Basically, to catch monsters and use them in battle, you must lay traps with base once they're in your trap, you must battle them in order to gain their loyalty, and with about 150 critters in the game, it's sure to keep you busy as you try to catch them all. If you're looking for a classic RPG with an epic quest to save the world, Dokopan is not for you. But if you want to try out a very unique combat system that offers hours upon hours of gameplay, Dokopan is well worth picking up. Like a lot of RPG gamers, I like traditional RPGs that have a linear story. Dokopan does not follow that format, and that will leave some gamers dissatisfied but for others, it might be a nice change of pace. 
While it's almost impossible to achieve the same level of critical acclaim and popularity as the legendary Punch-Out, there are actually many above average boxing titles out there which can easily stand their ground against the NES classic, Wade Hickston's Counter-Punch being one of them. The influence of the older game can be seen from the overall setup, atmosphere and depiction of boxing matches, as both games put a heavy emphasis on eye-hand coordination timing and pattern memorization. However, Wade Hickston's Counterpunch has its own style and control scheme to significantly distinguish itself and more importantly to deliver an addictive and fun experience, despite a couple of issues with its length and variety. Now about 90% of the game is spent in the ring as Wade squares off against one of eight opponents. The key to winning is simple, you've got to recognize the opponent's pattern, react swiftly and master the art of timing your hits. Each opponent has a respective trait and special attack and they provide a very steady and progressive challenge. The next boxer you're up against will always be faster, stronger and more durable than the previous ones you've just beat. The game makes it very clear that in order to advance you as the player have to get better. While you can reinforce Wade's arsenal of moves by purchasing new abilities, you can't exactly make him able to sustain more hits or move faster. It's the player himself that has to train his timing, sharpen their reflexes and know the opponents. This is the kind of game with a practice makes perfect formula and you'll find it very rewarding as you finally overcome that certain opponent who previously knocked you around like a rag doll. However, as compelling and challenging as the gameplay is, it's just all over too quickly. With more boxes and gameplay modes, Wade Hickson's Counterpunch would have been one of the Game Boy Advance's classics, instead of being somewhat lost in the vast library of the system. The Gradius series has been around for almost 40 years now, but has continued to prove that when it comes to shooters, it's often looked at as the gold standard. The game has many grueling stages, all of which require precise control and some careful planning. You won't get through this game just by holding down shoot, but thankfully for newcomers there are three different difficulty settings and an automatic power-up system, but in my opinion that defies what Gradius is all about, customization. On the other hand, pros can use the good old manual power-up selection and play on hard difficulty and there are some very intense parts in the game where the screen lights up with the insane amount of shots flying around right left and center. There is another great feature about Gradius Galaxies that I like as well. You can continue from any breakpoints in any stage that you want and the Konami code is always at your disposal if you want full power-ups. You can go for a marathon no death clear from stage 1 to wherever you may finish or you can take on a nasty boss in one of the later levels. By doing this it ends up offering near endless ways to interact interact with the game and even has the capability of the player setting and achieving their own lofty goals, therefore bumping the replay value significantly and offering one of the most robust entries in the series as a result. Radius Galaxies is a versatile game that will definitely scratch your shoot 'em up itch. It has the same power-ups, design elements and level themes that make Gradius what it is, but manages to mix it up just enough to offer something unique for both veterans of the series and for those looking to dip their toes in. One Piece chronicles the adventures of a boy named Monkey D. Luffy, who after eating a cursed fruit, gains the ability to stretch his body like rubber. Fortunately, Luffy develops several fighting techniques which utilize this change. Each technique has a particular use, so players are encouraged to fight intelligently instead of using brute force. However, a certain amount of cash that you earn by defeating enemies is required in order to learn these techniques. Not only that, but earning more cash nets other goodies such as increasing Luffy's maximum life and giving him the ability to store more points toward powerful techniques. This semi-level up system encourages players to explore the levels, beat up all the bad guys and find and defeat all of the mini bosses. It's also a great way of giving slightly less skilled players an edge by allowing them to beef up Luffy before a big boss fight. Also, once you advance in the story, crewmates join your pirate crew. However, after entering a stage, they disappear, so you've got to find them in every stage. That means unless you are extremely lucky or are willing to spend a whole mess of time and energy looking for all of them, you'll just have to do without some of the crew members for most of the levels. Sure, most of their abilities aren't much better than Luffy's, but some of them are essential in the latter parts of the game. Having to look in every nook and cranny in every single stage seems like a cheap way to overly pad the experience, and for the most part, you'd be right in assuming that, but littered throughout each area, there are items and power-ups that make traversing each level easier, so it does pay off for those willing to do so. If you're on the lookout for a solid platformer with plenty of charm and challenge, then One Piece would make for a great option. 
Super Dodgeball Advance is a nice blend of action with some RPG elements thrown in for good measure. The action comes in with a bang thanks to the fast paced dodgeball action you can participate in, and the RPG aspects come both during play and in between matches in the championship mode. During play, there are hit points assigned to each player in the game. The use of hit points opens up a whole new level of strategy in the game, which is primarily due to the delicately balanced defense and offense. For example, for defense, you can either catch the ball, which has a lesser probability of working as opposed to just ducking out of the way. However, when you catch the ball, it is no longer active and can no longer harm your teammates. Finding that delicate balance for each match is quite a bit of fun once you've got accustomed to how the game works. On the other hand, for offense, you can do one of many things. You can go all out and just start attacking players without planning ahead, or you can put some strategy into the mix by blending some defensive maneuvers with your play. Now the graphics are just as fine tuned as the gameplay. Each player in the game has a distinct look and little touches like minute hair colour changes can be made out with relative ease. The playing fields and their surroundings all look spectacular. While the basic playing field is the same for each area, barring a different main colour, they are all filled with tons of background objects that help create a different mood and feel for each area. For example, when playing in Canada, you'll see snow-covered structures and deep, multicolored skies greeting you when you play. All in all, I would have to say Super Dodgeball Advance is one of the Game Boy Advance's finest games. A perfect blend of diverse gameplay and sharp controls is something that should just not be missed. At its core, Egg Mania is a competitive game, with the goal being to beat your opponent by seeing who can build the tallest tower the fastest. Similar to Tetris, blocks of various shapes will descend from the heavens for you to build with, but unlike Tetris, you won't be constantly clearing layers away. Instead, you want as many layers as possible. You physically move to grab the blocks as they fall and avoid the ones that you don't want. You might think you can just spam the bricks in a big stack to quickly reach the top, but you actually can't do this. The game requires you to build a quality, solid wall to wall tower, and it punishes you quite severely if you don't do this. Happen to build an awkward mess full of holes or try to cheat with a tall, uneven tower, and it will all come crashing down. But building solid towers as fast as you possibly can is the whole point of the game, and it's honestly quite a lot of fun. I love Tetris variants that add elements to the tried and tested formula, and with this being competitive, that ties in more unique elements. There are three weapons in the game, and they all have their different uses. The hammer is one of the best, if it hits the opposing egg, they will fall off their tower, giving you some time to get ahead. There is also a thundercloud, and this will position itself on the enemy's field and send down bolts of lightning, basically creating a no-go zone for a few seconds. Now these weapons are useful tools to damage the opponent, but then there's the third weapon, bombs. The bombs, to put bluntly, completely suck. They almost never work and just end up causing you problems. Overall, this game is an incredibly fun puzzler. It's challenging and can get annoying at times, but stays consistently engaging. If you like Tetris variants, especially the competitive type, or are simply looking for a fast-paced puzzle game for your collection, then Egg Mania is definitely worth checking out. Dynasty Warriors Advance is best described as a light version of the popular Musou series. There is strategy elements involved, but it all takes place on the battle map and doesn't involve the numerous menus and micromanaging that makes up its home console counterparts. Each battle throws somewhere between 12 to 60 archers, spearmen, and swordsmen your way. You're timed in these battles as well, with defeating your opponents before the first timer runs out, granting you a triumph. The second is a mere victory, and the third for the close call. What makes it interesting is that some enemies can only be defeated during a certain time period. Now it might have the potential to annoy some players, but once you get a grasp of each of your moves and abilities, it provides an extra layer of challenge for the player to overcome that doesn't feel cheap. Weapons can be exchanged while you're on the map screen, and you can find new weapons and different stats by wandering around the battlefield. Some new weapons are obviously superior to others, but sometimes you need to decide if you need attack power more than defense when switching them out that lends a nice sense of strategy depending on the situation at hand. The graphics are pretty good, although they don't push the hardware any more than a mid to late SNES game would, it sees you facing off against about half a dozen enemies at once, which is of course nowhere near the level of mayhem the console versions produce, but it still manages to capture the essence of the series regardless of this limitation. Also, there's a handful of enemy and general designs, although all of the heroes and major villains have unique sprites, which help them stand out. If you're a fan of the series and are willing to overlook some of its shortcomings, this could be a nice addition to your collection. 
On the surface, Oriental Blue looks like a typical JRPG, but it's actually quite complex. The game uses what they call a free scenario system, which is basically a fancy term for a branching storyline. Although the game only has one ending, the path you take along the way there will probably be very different from someone else's playthrough. Unlike most RPGs, you don't have scripted wins or losses in boss battles. If you lose against a boss who's trying to steal a certain item, they will steal it and get away with their crime. If you beat them, you'll keep it safe. The boss battles in this game are very challenging, so even if you're unable to beat the boss, you can continue to play through the story. In fact, certain events are only available when you lose, which makes for a rather unique adventure. Speaking of battles, your attacks and skills are percentage based rather than set to fixed amounts of damage, so the skills you have at the beginning of the game are just as useful at the end. You won't find yourself using only one super powerful move over and over again as well, as you really need to use strategy because most of the skills also have drawbacks. The battle screen has a lot more than just the basic RPG set. Most RPGs have a defend option, but each character in Oriental Blue can choose to either defend, dodge, or cover another character at any time. There's also a tactic setting for each character to specify which type of enemy they'll attack. Of course, you can also choose to give each of them their commands directly. The mechanics of the game put most RPGs to shame, but the storyline is what truly shines. The cities that you visit are rich and full of life. The characters actually have interesting things to say. The game is very non-linear, which can seem overwhelming at first, but once you start exploring the world, you'll see how it all comes together. There are so many nice little details that all add to the overall feel of the world, and especially the believability of the story that transpires. So if you fancy jumping into a new RPG on the GBA, Oriental Blue would make for a great choice. Well that does it for today's video, keep an eye out for part 3 as that will be coming up soon, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified about new videos. You can follow me on all of the socials which are linked below to stay up to date and also join my growing community on Discord to meet many like-minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters Rhino, Skill Jim, Shuden, Richard, Amy, Daniel, Paul, Dio, Omar, Strider, Pierre, Carl, Awesome Jacket Dude, Ryan, Alex, Gamecube Galaxy, Chris Salaryman and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining my Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon, you'll find all of these links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, I'll catch you next time.